Picture this, you come home one day from work, a long, hard day of work. You open the door and behind the door is a stranger in your home. What's your immediate reaction? So I would be like, what the heck are you doing here? I have a lot of questions. Crazy, crazy going on. You shouldn't be trying to steal my house. Yes, you are. You don't even how about that? A squatter standoff. A property owner confronts a group of people she says moved into her million dollar home in Queens and our cameras were rolling as dozens of officers showed up. Several people were taken away in handcuffs and one of those arrested may surprise you. Investigative reporter Dan Krauth joins us now with more on what happened. Tell us, Dan. Well, this is a very big growing problem. I received dozens of tips from viewers about this in just the past week. I went to do what I thought was going to be a routine interview. Instead, we capture what police and property owners are dealing with on a daily basis. I have video of you. Oh, yeah. 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 To understand how this day ended, we need the police right away. With multiple 911 calls and arrests, we have to start at the beginning. Adele, the hardest question is how do you say your name? We met Adele and Deloro outside the home her parents left her in Flushing, Queens. She's in the process of selling it. No, he loved it. But she's been locked out. She claims squatters moved in on February 6th and refused to leave. What's it like being here knowing you can't go inside of your own home? It's enraging. It really is. In New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. By the time that someone does their investigation and they do their work and their job, we'll be well over the 30 days and this man will have stolen my home. And now she's back. Just after wrapping up our interview, a woman showed up. What are you doing in the house? Are you renting this house? Why are you here? She unlocked the front door. We saw our cameras and took off. It's open. Let's go in the house. It's open. I think they need to publicly shame these people. Why are you blurring her face? In the event this person is in the neighborhood, in Queens or whatever borough, I need to know who this person is, what type of people they are to just occupy space. Adele and her daughter, with the property deed in hand, went inside. This is my furniture. These are my curtains. She didn't just find her belongings inside. There's a man sleeping right there. Get out of my house. She found two men. How long have you lived here? I moved here about two days ago. They've called the police on me, and I've called the locksmith. I didn't come in illegally. The door was open. Police started interviewing neighbors and looked. And the strangest thing is that if you change the locks, you cut the lights out, you cut the gas, like you could be fine and you could be arrested because technically speaking, if these people have been living there for the last 30 days or more, they have rights. They're legal tenants. Insane. Looking for documents. Do you have something that shows that you've been here for 30 days? They took the man who told me he had been renting for two days out in handcuff. They have nothing to show. <laughs> they have absolutely zero to show that they've been there for the last 30 days. Nothing. They got one out. And escorted the other guy off the property. Now you're afraid to come out. I'm not coming out. This house is empty. This is my home. My they knew exactly what they were doing because they're coming in with suitcases, yeah? Suitcases. They knew exactly what they were doing. The locksmith is on the corner waiting to change my locks. And that's not fair. It's not fair that I, as the homeowner, should be having to go through this. How are you doing? Minutes later, a locksmith showed up. But police gave her a warning before they left. I may end up in handcuffs today if this man shows up here and says that I have illegally evicted him. I said to them, let him take me to court the way I've been told to take him to court. But today, I'm not leaving my house. Less than 10 minutes after police left and the locks were changed. The man who claims to be the one actually leasing the house shows up. Call the police again. With the other guy, police took off the property. Do you see this? This guy just literally broke down my door broke through myself and my daughter to get in here this guy just forced himself into my house yes he did and so did you you broke through the front door the man called shout out to this woman because she's like a little pint-sized little thing <laughs> but she got a mouth on her and hey listen you put in a lot of money into a home just to find out that some stranger bozo off the street just come and take your I would be highly upset too.
Call the police on her. So why is it that I have to leave and he doesn't have to leave? Because technically he can't be kicked out. He needs to go to court. They consider this a landlord-tenant issue. And by law, it has to be handled through the housing court, not with police. If you own this house, you would not want I her inside. I don't own this house. Exactly, yes. she does. Yes, but then once again, you should know how the law works. I and do know how it there's, works. There's rules to the as you got to go to court and send me to civil court. He says he signed a lease in October, but wouldn't tell us with who. I got proof longer than that. Show us the proof. Well, who are you for me to show? I showed it to cops. Dan with Channel 7 News. If you don't want to show it, you I'll don't want to show, show it. Come here, bro. I like that. I, I, would, I would like to see it. He didn't show me a lease. This, this is a bill. Is a bill for work he says he had done to the house. He didn't show police a lease either. The police department doesn't have the lease? No. He's got no documentation. It's just bills. So, Adele, you're getting arrested right now? I'm being arrested. For what? For being, in my, for being in my own home. And, and where's your lease? She's fighting the house. It's not her house anymore. My deed That's is current and legal. Arrested for unlawful eviction. She changed the locks on a man who claims he lives there. So how does this all end then? When do you leave? The way it ends is, is either she pays me my money that I put into the house, pay me the money, and I'll leave. Or send me to court, and we deal with the judge in court. It's that simple. It's that simple. It's it's that simple he is just bold fake i've never seen anybody like this he's just bold with it and there are a lot of and i've seen some videos there are a lot of tiktok people telling them exactly what to do it's crazy. not that simple it's a long process eviction can take close to two years to complete then let's fast forward <laughs> This is insane. Listen, New York right now is a hot mess. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's a hot mess up in here. Um, let's go to okay, squatters kicked out. This story was also a really a rather unfortunate. This happened recently. Um let's see hold on a second um squatter um city yeah this this story was really heartbreaking look at this Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. And I do want to get to a developing story out of the New York City area where mm. police are searching for a pair of squatters who they say may be tied to the murder of a woman. I've noticed that they run in pairs. They don't ever run solo. They run in pairs with each other, you know, and they know the law very, very well. Her body found stuffed inside a duffel bag inside her apartment. Very. That's crazy. Can you imagine you come home only to get your house breaking into and not only that you lose your life? This seems a little too personal for me. Like they may have known her and been watching her in and out, going in and out of her place. I think that's the reason why they were so successful disturbing details here. Briella Tomasetti with our Fox 5 New York team joining us live with what we know so far. Good morning, Briella. Yeah, Josh, this case is more than a week old, but police are finally starting to sort out some of these details. Having just flown in from abroad, the 52-year-old victim, Nadia Vittel, stopped by her late mother's apartment here in Kitts Bay. It's uh, right here in my rear view. And she was getting it ready for a family friend to move in. Cops say, though, when she unexpectedly found those squatters inside, that's when things took a turn for the worse. You know, I'm starting to see a theme here. These squatters, not only do they know the law, they know when a home becomes vacant. And it typically looks like whenever someone passes away, these squatters go go into the property and... The NYPD has new insight on who may be connected to the murder of a woman whose body was found stuffed inside a duffel bag in her Manhattan apartment. Investigators are looking for a pair of squatters, a man and a woman, who they believe were staying in the apartment prior to the gruesome discovery. Police say 52-year-old Nadia Vittel was last seen walking into her apartment building on East 31st Street in Kipps Bay 
last Tuesday. It came as a complete shock. I'm surprised, you know. I didn't even know. Jean Pump. Mm, 206 East 31st. So that's probably near, I want to say York and First Avenue around there. On East 30, so Kipps Bay area. It's really not that heavy in traffic there mm, on 35th 31st street not really you don't get a lot of foot traffic in that area on pay is the building superintendent he says surveillance video shows vitel getting in the elevator and going up to her apartment on the 19th floor a friend called to make a wellness check but there was no answer so i went out knock on the door and it was just only the dog barking Shortly afterwards, the victim's son and two in-laws arrived to Vitell's apartment. When police got there, Vitell's lifeless body was found in the closet, stashed inside a duffel bag. Mm. Investigators claim she was beaten to death. When I so her, she was found stashed in a duffel bag in the closet. Very, it's definitely some people who hated her. I came into work, there was an ambulance here and one cop car. Police allege the squatters had been staying in Vitell's apartment for days and when she returned, the pair killed her and took off in her SUV. Security cameras captured the suspects coming in on Sunday and leaving Tuesday afternoon, the same day Vitell was last seen. It's believed that they drove her car across the George Washington Bridge into New Jersey and then into Pennsylvania where they crashed the vehicle. It's scary when something like this happens, you... Into Pennsylvania. So they went all the way. They crossed state lines. They murdered her, stuffed her in a bag, stuffed her in a closet, jumped in a car, in her car at that. Crossed state line. George W. Bridge, crossed state lines, went to New Jersey, went to PA, and crashed a car. You always expect it to happen somewhere else and not in your own neighborhood. Republican State Assemblyman Jake Blumenkranz has filed a bill that would make it easier for homeowners to remove squatters from their properties. Under New York State law, people who claim their tenants can't be arrested for trespassing. That also means homeowners can't change the locks, get rid of their stuff, or shut off the electricity. The bill would allow police to intervene and make arrests instead of forcing homeowners into an arduous court process. Yeah, they need to do that because when the homeowners are forced into court, these squatters have more than enough time to s s stay at the apartment. More than enough time to stay at the apartment, do fixtures, like it will be a legal eviction process. It's going to cost them so much money and by the time they go through all the hoops and hurdles of legal fees, lawyers, this, that, and the fourth. Yeah. Yeah, and speaking of tenants' rights, a lot of states do give tenants the upper hand. Now, this bill states that tenants do not include squatters and give people rights after 45 days rather than the current 30 days, considering most short term rentals here in New York City require the tenant, uh, the tenant excuse me, to stay for at least a month. For now, we're live here in Kips Bay, though. Josh will send it back to you. All right, Briella Thomas said that if I was a t if I was a landlord, the first thing I would do is make sure that I if I have tenancy or, sh or if I'm operating a short term situation like Airbnb, I would not have anybody stay more than 29 days, like 29th day, even 28th day. They got to get get out of my apartment because of this. People today, they don't operate on an honor system where if I'm renting an apartment to you or yeah, if I'm renting an apartment to you, there's no guarantee that you will leave peacefully. People right now, they're desperate for housing and they'll do anything at all costs. And clearly in these two scenarios, people are emboldened to do anything at all costs. Let's also look at what they're trying to do about this situation so as you heard in the video there is a bill that will try to prevent these squatters from having any rights whatsoever 
um, temporarily at least. Let's see what seven on your side has to say about this part here. Investigation to a growing problem in the tri-state area, squatters living in other people's homes all on the homeowner's dime. And we've told you about a few cases over the just the past few two weeks. Mm -hmm. And it's all due to a legal loophole, a loophole that some people are working hard to close. Investigative reporter Dan Crowell joining us now with what he's found. Dan. Yeah, New York has a long history of passing laws to protect tenants from greedy landlords, and for good reason. But some lawmakers say those laws have gone way too far. They say it also allows dishonest people to milk the system and to get free housing for years. That's the problem. I understand there is the term slumlord. <laughs> it's a term slumlord for a reason. But now um, we need to advocate more for landlords. We need to give them the same protections that we've given tenants. Because today is unlike any other time in history. People will do whatever they can to get free from the system so let's see let's see what they are proposing hopefully it's something that can protect these owners long term i hate when they do temporary things i prefer them to like just go all in but the government the state and local officials are very slow to act very slow we've heard from homeowner we are at the mercy of the squatter the criminal after homeowner i don't have access they changed my side locks and you know what floors me that they treat the owners as the criminal here they're the one who have to file the court case they're the one who have to go to court and they're the one who have been putting out the money for these properties it's so unfair and they changed my entire front door. Who are fighting with squatters who have taken over their homes. In New York, if you call the police on someone who moved in without permission, if they claim to be a tenant, they can't be arrested for trespassing. The homeowner instead has to take them to court. It's an unfortunate upside down world. Jake Blumenkranz is trying to change that. They know how to work the law to stay for a certain number of days and kind of work the system. In New York, squatters have rights after... If you're so concerned about homeowners and i'm trying not to get political and everything but here's these are the real problems that are happening people are they don't have any protections for their own home and look at that one guy out in district 15 right for a certain number of days and kind of work the system in new york squatters have rights after 30 days that means the property owner can't change the locks on them can't remove their belongings can't cut off the utilities or they could be arrested instead property owners must go through the court system to get rid of them a system that could take close to two years for resolution people could can you imagine that it can take you up to two years to get these mother out of your place two years <laughs> i know some people <laughs> and i'm pretty sure y'all know some people personally they'll take matters into their whole their own hands and let's say that that squatter may not come out with the best outcome if you know what i'm saying could stay in a home for years years without having justice brought to them for staying essentially for free and making a homeowner uh have to pay their bills his newly filed bill is pretty simple it states a tenant doesn't include squatters. You're basically defining what a tenant is. Absolutely. And making sure that squatters can't take advantage of the law. That's all we're doing. It would mean if someone breaks into a home without permission or documents, police can have the authority to arrest them. It sounds very easy. You'd think so. But unfortunately, there are many people here who are trying to fight against legislation like this. Who is behind the opposition? Unfortunately, there's a lot of squatter advocates, people who think that these individuals deserve more rights than those who own property. 
The bill is gaining bipartisan support, and it's working its way through both houses of the legislature. Of course, we'll keep you posted on what happens. And I can tell you it is possible. Florida just passed a similar law just a few weeks ago. It allows police to arrest squatters instead of sending it through the court system, which can take about 20 months to get a resolution. But are you going to arrest them and keep them in jail? Or are you going to arrest when them? I first learned about are you going to arrest them and send them right back out on the streets? Because that's the problem that I have with New York City. You arrest someone, it doesn't stick. And so people keep committing crimes. These people are criminals. All right. Now I saw this and I was like, wait, what? Squatters sees Beverly Hills Mansion near LeBron James' new home. Neighbor th thanks liberals. <laughs> this story came out yesterday, so I have no clue as to... Let me see. Let me refresh the page. Ha. Huh. Let's see if there... Oh, there is a video on this. Okay, it's one of those with music so let's see squatter sees okay that was by the new york post beverly grove place a quaint enclave adjacent to beverly hills has long been coveted address for the rich and famous we know that however shockwave rippled through the neighborhood when reports surfaced of squatters taking up residence from October wow to February so they've been staying there a couple of months it looks like about five months for five months wow according to curbed so let's see what happened here ah Morgan Garillo an aspiring actor spearheaded the operation fabricating oh the operation so there's more than one person fabricating a fake lease to establish his claim over the mansion without facing legal repercussions according to the outlet so who did he submit this to mm. great actor his nights were a blur of relentless rivalry with parties raging five evenings a week each demanding hefty admission fees ranging from 500 so he's even raising money <laughs> so old boy put together a little night party and start raising money $500 to $1500 to get in it's crazy Legal recourse finally materialized in January when eviction proceedings were initiated against the squatters and they agreed to vacate the property. But he made some money out of it though. Despite California law deeming squatting illegal, adverse possession statutes allow squatters to take to stake a claim over a property after five years of uninterrupted occupancy. While Gargulio, Gargulio hadn't met this threshold, his gambit highlighted the flaws in the California's legal framework. Of course it does. Mm -hmm. And see, that's the problem. These people interpret the laws, right? They, they interpret the laws, they have loopholes, and this is how they're able to acquire possession of this place. Let me see how much. Beverly Grove Place, a quaint enclave adjacent to Beverly Hills. I mean, homes over there is worth $61 million. <laughs> wow. 
they are op opportunistic grifters exploiting a neglected mansion to masquerade as affluent socialites and hosts these people listen they're probably looking at these addresses they're looking at what properties are on sale they're looking to see who owns what right they're probably scoping out the area to see who's coming in and out of these mansions and if you don't see any foot traffic then they go in and then on sale oh okay so this is yeah uh-huh so this particular property has been on sale since august of last year for 4.6 million i'm sorry mm. 90210 mm -mm -mm. yep now his name and his face is all over social media so it will be definitely difficult to rent an apartment apartment or purchase a home <laughs> if i was him because now everyone knows that you squatted a mansion in Beverly Hills. And you do illegal. Shh. Wow. So he got he clearly got evicted and got kicked out. Anyways, folks, that is it for this video. Wow. About these squatters trying to take control of these cities in new york um these houses in new york people pay good solid money for their places and this is not it is totally unfair to say the least but tell me what you guys think about this whole squatter thing like do you think that it's right you think people have a right to have a home regardless if they own it on paper or not or you just think like anybody else hey this is out of control and not fair especially if i invested i bought this property outright like there's nobody who can kick me out other than you know the government because they own the land so comment down below thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video